banking structures and mechanisms of tomorrow will play a massive role in shaping growth and change. In particular, support for financial institutions and correspondent banks will power the real economy and enable productivity and prosperity. So to look at tomorrow's banking and how we might get there, we're joined by Michael Spiegel, Global Head of Transaction Banking at Standard Chartered, and Marisa Drew, Chief Sustainability, uh, Sustainability Officer at Standard Chartered. Guys, welcome to Cybos TV. Uh, hope you're enjoying your Cybos experience in 2022 here at the end of day two. Michael, if I can start with you, sir. Almost three decades ago, if I can cast your mind back to 1994, Bill Gates famously said, banking is necessary, banks are not. Was he wrong? Well, as much as it pains me to say, um, yes, he was wrong. But he, at the time, also thought that the internet would have very little commercial value. So uh, you're not always right. I think he's done marvelous things in his life. Uh, and he actually continues to do wonderful things for the world. But on that one, he was wrong. Um, however, I dare say if banks do not evolve and innovate, uh, they may not be required anymore. So I think there is some truth to it. OK, there are plenty of themes that are happening at Cybos. It really continues a tradition. In terms of Standard Chartered, your theme is tomorrow's banking. That's the theme for Cybos. But what does it actually mean? I'd like to get your understanding first, Marisa, and then Michael. Well, certainly, um, since we're on the theme of, of the great Bill Gates, I think utilizing technology to power the way we do business is a big theme. Clearly, digitization, making it easier, taking friction out of the system, and also making it more efficient in the process, but also the connectivity piece. If uh, we turn our attention to the markets of Standard Charter, which are largely the developing world, so Asia, Africa, Middle East, um, half of this is about being able to connect in those far-flung regions. And in some cases, our clients have very little infrastructure on the ground, so we're using technology to bridge those gaps and serve their needs. So that's one big theme. And then the second big theme that is, of course, near and dear to my heart as a chief sustainability officer is sustainability. How do we do this? How do we bank uh, for the tomorrow world where we're encouraging our clients to develop more sustainable business practices? Trade is a perfect example. Supply chains are a perfect example where many of our clients in the West are trying to get to the very end of a supply chain in the developing markets, and they're looking for us to help them figure that out through the use of technology and the banking practices so they can ensure to their stakeholders that their uh, products and services are, are truly sustainable. Mm. Lots there. Okay, that's fantastic. And would you care to add to that, Michael? Look, I, the only thing I would add is that the world keeps evolving. And as I started, right, we need to evolve ourselves. We need to look for the solutions for tomorrow. Our job, and, and you mentioned the real economy, I mean, transaction banking, we power the real economy, if you like. We facilitate, we help to facilitate commerce. And it will change. The client demands are different. As Marissa said, two main themes. We need to evolve, and that's why we look into the future for tomorrow. But also reading your clients as well, because their needs will change. Of course. I mean, it's a, it's a constant dialogue and, and, and evolution. I mean, we just earlier had, a, had a, the big issue debate about taking out friction out of the payment system, uh, how we use technology, the, the future of CBDC, etc. So there's a lot of things evolving. Staying with you, Michael, for a moment. Now, we've lost count of how many times we've heard the news talk about supply chain challenges. Uh, so as such that the, that the man on the street is now familiar with the term. How has this impacted your clients? And how can banks and financial institutions help ease these strains, do you think? So it has impacted everybody to an extent. And I think the man on the street um, has also sometimes seen that he or she couldn't get certain certain goods or that the delivery of cars got delayed, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we see a resetting of the whole globalization, right? We will see clearly we have seen a shift from, from just-in-case delivery, mm -hmm. uh, from just-in-time to just-in-case uh, because the, it's not as reliable anymore. So we actually need to have some inventory in some places. We can help buy some financing clearly. Um, you see a shift in where, where production happens. That's where we play a role, making it more transparent. Uh, that's where we play a role with our clients. So there's a lot in uh, moving at the moment, and, and we have a role to play here. And Marisa, if we could get a, a CSO view on sure. supply chains from yourself. With pleasure. So um, one of the debates we had this morning was 
um, the question mark is globalization dead? You know, we had the globalized world and then we found the shock of, of COVID and, and all the things Michael was talking about, the inaccessible supply. And the question then became, um, does everything need to be onshore? Do you need it local? And I think the reality is now we're starting to move back the other way. We are not going to move away from global interconnectivity. So global supply chains will continue. I think though that um, many people are looking to have an alternative and a lot of those alternatives are close by. Now where sustainability comes into that is in many cases, um, what is produced locally often, especially in the developing world, are based on more sustainable practices. So if you think about something like agriculture, um, some of the ways of the past regenerative agriculture that is very respectful of the land, that's using practices like uh, crop rotation and things that we sort of lost track of in the West when we're trying to build huge food systems and move that product around the world, we can learn from each other. And so that's an exciting place for me as a, a sustainability professional, saying how can we actually use the power of the connectivity, the power of the technology to learn um, and then in, and share best practices around, around the globe. The other piece of it, and I started to touch on this a little bit, um, was when we have these large cap clients, their stakeholders are demanding when they buy goods and services, they want to know, is it really sustainable? We've been labeling all these things and all the consumer businesses and so on. Um, but the, they've got an answer to that. And if we can help go all the way through the supply chain with our technology and our banking services, um, and uplift the behaviors and practices at the very end, we can then go back to those large cap clients and tell them, yes, we've, we were on it, right? We, we, you can have confidence. So there's a huge role for financial services to play in, in squaring that circle. You, you've kind of answered the question I was going to put to you, Marissa, and that is about the, the sustainability issue, the impact that it's having on banking. What other ways is sustainability <coughs> impacting banking? It's rippling through everything we do. So in some cases, it starts with our own commitment as an organization. So we've committed to be net zero through what we call scope one, two, and three by 2050. So that's not only our own footprint, so the, the foot, green footprint of our real estate. It is our own supply chain, the vendors that we buy from. But the trickier part is scope three, which is our financed emissions. So as a bank, we're providing capital to a myriad of clients all over the globe in a myriad of industries. And if we are actually facilitating by the provision of capital, those who aren't transitioning, we're cutting against our own commitment. So one of the things that we have to do is get deep into the discussions with our clients and say, if we're on the net zero journey and we wanna to continue to lend to you, you need to be there with us. And how do we do that? We do that through helping to share best practices. How do you evolve your business model? How can we provide M&A advice, for instance, to go buy green assets or jettison those that are brown? So this is deeply permeating everything we do from capital provision to advice, to trade finance, uh, new products and services that are getting created that have that sustainability wrapper, if you will, around them. Um, it really is, um, I'd say, profound and systemic change in mm -hmm. how we think about business from, from its very core and effectively redefining what banking is all about in the 21st century world. But there we have to leave it. We appreciate your presence here. That's Michael Spiegel, Head of Transaction Banking at Standard Chartered, and also Marissa Drew, Chief Sustainability Officer at SC Standard Chartered. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV, and enjoy the rest of the event. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.